I am thrilled to introduce you to Devin Lee, who is a certified online business manager and certified Dubsado specialist. You may already have systems in place for your business, such as client intake, a welcome sequence of emails for your lead magnet, and automated triggers to remind you of what steps to do next in your workflow. Devin and I are going to talk about why systems are so important in general and specifically for podcasting. You're going to love Devin. She is the self-proclaimed fun big sis for your biz and the high energy hype woman who will bring a calm oasis to your business. Welcome, Devin. I'm so happy you're here today. Hi, Kelly. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. Absolutely. So when I first started in my business, I had no systems in place. And when I would hear the word system, I was like, no, that will stifle my creativity. <laughs> and I think so many entrepreneurs still bristle at the idea of systems. Why do you think that is? Gosh, well, you know, my theory is for a lot of folks that creating systems doesn't come naturally for I think it's like taking your medicine where it's like, you know, it's good for your business, but it kind of seems like a chore. It's not very fun for a lot of people, especially if you're really creative, if you're a visionary, which a lot of businesses are, business owners are. Um, it's not fun to do that, like boring administrative work. Um, and they'll find after a while not having the systems in place becomes really, really stressful and can prevent the ability, the space to be more creative, as you mentioned before. So it's, I think it's just, I, I, I assume it's just maybe a little boring for people. True. Yeah, I think that was part of it for me. And the idea of trying to create them. Like, mm. I was not a systematic person, even though I, or, okay, let me take that back. I didn't think I was mm. because I didn't want to take the time to sit down and create a system. And yeah. then I did. And I found that I could be creative in coming up with systems. That is such a good point, Kelly. Because I think, well, first of all, I think people just don't know how to create the systems. And that's really scary. So it seems really big and really daunting. But you make a really good point because one of the things I love about creating systems is there's off, uh, often a creative problem to solve, or I like to call it like business riddles that we then have to solve. Mm -hmm. And so you kind of have to like get into the flow. Sometimes you might need to like consult a biz bestie or, you know, a colleague that you really jive with um, and kind of figure it out together and solve these problems to create these systems. But yeah, I think it's just really daunting at first if it's something you've never done and it's not something that comes naturally to you. Mm -hmm. Did it come naturally to you originally? Because you're a very creative person. I, you know, I, th those who don't know, I went to art school for eight years straight. So I always identified as an artist, um, but my degree is in the business of art. So it totally came naturally to me. And it's so funny, my first business, I was a professional organizer. And after a while, I started to notice like, oh, I really prefer like the back end admin system creating over doing the actual work sometimes because it's very soothing to me. Um, so when I trans, you know, transformed into an online business manager, it kind of was a natural uh, next step for me. Wow. So why are systems so important for business? Well, I just feel like they're the lifeblood of a business. The way I see it is, you know, most businesses go in um, these these stages. The first stage is you're new, you're scrappy, you're just trying to figure it out. You're kind of windmilling through things. Um, it's very exciting. It's very stressful. You don't have any systems because you don't really know what's happening in your business yet. And then the next stage is even if you're not intentionally making systems, something is coming together where you're like, okay, now I've had X amount of clients. So I know that when a client comes on, I need to send a contract, send an invoice. When I offboard them, I need to deliver X, Y, Z, um, all that good stuff. So things start to come together. And then I think there's a fork in the road where you either say, okay, I'm starting to get an idea of what a system could look like. Let me document it perfect it, refine it, start to delegate pieces of it, start to automate pieces of it. Um, 
And then that's where once you get those systems in place, then, okay, now that is out of the way. I don't need to use brain space trying to remember what my system is, or even I don't have to spend time and money on it if it's automated. Then you have more brain space to, um, you know, take control of other things in your business. Like maybe you try something new in marketing. Maybe you get a hold of bookkeeping. It leaves space for everything else. But if you are bogged down by all of the like admin tasks in your business, um, it's really, it, it's a big brain drain. That's the biggest thing is like, maybe you are, you know, subconsciously on autopilot kind of making it through all the systems in your business, but having to remember what to do, that I think is the biggest drain on your biggest resources in your business, which is your brain. <laughs> I agree. That is so true. Trying to remember everything. You sit down and approach something that you've done before, maybe even done a lot, but you can forget things. And trying to remember, you know, activating those parts of your brain again. And let's go back to creativity. Take up, like you said, that brain space. And I think can block creativity because you're trying to think about what you're doing. I, I think of like being in, a shower, in the shower and you know where your shampoo is, you know where the soap is, you know where your conditioner is. So when I take a shower, as long as everything is in the right place, I'm on autopilot. I don't have to think about it. And so we get ideas in the shower, right? Because we don't have to think about where's the shampoo? Where'd my soap go? And when anything is out of place, then I'm not as creative because all of a sudden the flow is blocked because I have to figure out where the heck my shampoo went. And so like when I have a system in place that's like automated or where I can look at the checklist, then I don't have to think. I can get into a flow. Absolutely. And so, yeah, it's two parts. You, you just said it. Like the first part is making sure all your bases are covered. It breaks my heart when I hear business owners tell me, I just, sometimes I just don't even send a contract because I don't remember or I'm busy. And I, I'll quickly tell you this. My partner works for a big company that I won't say who it is, but he is on uh, the team that deals with um, professionals and customers having disputes. And the disputes are usually Someone paid someone $30,000 and there was no contract and they got screwed over. Mm. It's like, you need a contract. So that's the first important part of having systems is you get all your ducks in a row. And then after that, then you can say, okay, well, how can I maybe add in another step of like sending a thank you card after I'm done working with someone or send a follow-up email or ask for a testimonial, like all these little things that aren't crucial to the business running, but will really take you to the next level and yeah, are creative. Yeah, absolutely. And something else I found before I put systems in place is forgetting those things or having to remember over and over again. And, and even once I would write things down, but before I started automating, I'd burn out. Have you found that to be a problem? Like in your cell? Well, you always have. <laughs> So um, with clients and with colleagues? Yes, absolutely. And Kelly, I tell this story often because it is heartbreaking to see a client burn out. I'll, I'll tell, I'll leave them totally anonymous. But when I was on retainer as an OBM, I had one client who she was an absolute genius. She was so smart. She was amazing what she did. Um, getting referrals and leads was not a problem for her. Her sales conversion was like 95% or something crazy. Like that was not an issue for her. Where she got stuck was during onboarding. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have all these theories around what caused her to, you know, be so, I'll call, I call it being precious with kind of your systems. Um, she was doing everything manually. She was creating a like brand new proposal from scratch and then like a custom contract and then the follow ups like it was all completely manual um, because she didn't have it automated or delegated even. Yeah. Um, and it became such a burden for her. She got really burnt out. And then I saw her like kind of energetically push away leads even. Sure. Um, and it was I, it was really sad to see because she was amazing. And so um, I just feel like 
yeah, it, it, it really becomes a burden when you don't have these things systematized and streamlined. Yeah, absolutely. And then podcasting, something happens called pod fade, where people will give up on their podcast. And the norm is in fewer than 10 episodes, people will just give up and wow. just stop podcasting. And a big reason is because of burnout. They get in and then they realize, okay, this is tough. This takes work. And when they don't have a system in place, it's it's really tough. You know, when you have a system in place or systems, because we'll talk about two things, um, you have to remember all of those steps. And if you have guests, there's a whole other thing that we're really going to talk about. And it gets stressful, can get really stressful. And so then people are like, oh, okay, I just, I can't do this. Because in fewer than seven to 10 episodes, you're not going to see the the results that you want to see. You know, that's too fast. So yeah, it you don't want pod fade. People keep podcasting. So no. put these systems in place that we're going to talk about. And you also heard y'all listeners, when I interviewed Alex Sanfilippo, he was talking about podcast SOP for other systems. And we're going to talk about Dubsado today. So yeah. Um, so let's talk about real quick Dubsado and how you got into it, because you're going to be telling us how to use it for client intake. So let's talk about what it is and what it does first before you just tell us how to use it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll quickly tell you how I found and got into Dubsado and how I fell in love with Dubsado. So um, so basically, long story short, when I was in OBM, one of the things I was really passionate about and specialized in was kind of the client journey, creating SOPs around onboarding, offboarding, delivery, really um, writing it out, systematizing it, delegating, it, automating it, making sure Everything was just, you know, really tight and nothing was forgotten. Um, I saw the importance in having a really beautiful client experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I got really great at making these beautiful Google Docs that had everything we needed in it and putting them in the project management tool. Um, but I was still doing it, even though I was, you know, using different tools to automate where I could, I was still pretty much doing it manually. Um, you know, my clients hired me as an OBM and OBMs are not inexpensive. So they were spending a lot of money on me to do all these things for them. Um, and then one of my clients wanted to start using Dubsado. So I said, you know, I can learn any program is kind of what I say. So I jumped in and I fell in love because one, all anything you have to do with a client or, you know, even if you're a podcast host, you know, you can consider your guest a client in that sense. Um, any contract, any form, uh, any the scheduler, the invoice, like it's all in one place. Um, and then the, the best part of Dubsado is they have these beautiful workflow automations where you can kind of take your SOP, plug it into Dubsado, and it kind of just runs without you. Um, so I really, really fell in love with that. And I kind of just fell down the rabbit hole and then just started doing, you know, primarily Dubsado setups and got certified in Dubsado. And now I I kind of, you know, spread the message of, you know, how easy Dubsado can make your life as a business owner. That's awesome. So, yeah, at worst, using Google Docs, Sheets, Forms, then a scheduling system on top of that. But that is a lot to keep track of. So yeah. to have everything in one place is really great because then you don't have to remember, okay, where's my contract? Where's my form? Oh, and then add this link to the scheduling system. Again, all of that is better than nothing. Yeah. And it's better than a sticky note or even my beloved Apple notes. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so yeah, to have everything in one place really is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I'd like to just emphasize what you said. If nothing else, get yourself a Google Doc and get going. It's better yes. than nothing and it will be helpful. <laughs> yes, for sure. And um, one of the first things that I've recommended like in my course is just, uh, Google um, Sheets um, mm. to track guests yes. at worst. You know, you can easily set that up. What episode name, 
email address, the link to their episode. You can add their episode artwork, you know, the, for their specific episode. You can have all of that there, their episode number, the date of the interview, the date it's going to be released, everything right there. So at worst, do that. You know, you don't have triggers to remind you of things, but that is better than nothing. So absolutely. I and I think another place people get stuck, and I'm curious if you've seen that with your um, students in your course is I think people set up these systems and these sheets and then they don't follow or use it 100%. And they're like, oh, it's not working. I'm giving up. No, it is working. It's yes. still there. You don't have to use all of it. Maybe you tweak it. Yeah. Maybe you don't use it 100% of the time, but having it there and trying to use it and having the intention is going to be so helpful. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And then later when you want to get back in touch, like to, for a follow-up or get in touch later, meaning months or year or more later, you can go back and look at, oh, I interviewed them on blah date. It came out on, on you know, it was released on blah date. Here's their email address. I don't have to go scour my email. Uh, and maybe something happened to their email address in your email. You never know, you know, mm. weird things happen. Uh, it's all right there, either in the document or in your system. So, Absolutely. You know, it's all really important. Um, okay. So standard operating procedures in general. Can you explain that a little bit, please, and how it would work in a system like Dubsado? And then we'll yeah. get into specifically like, guest intake and client intake. Absolutely. So I have a formula I use for creating SOPs. Um, I have uh, my my freebie, if you will, is an, the Elevated Client Journey Workbook. Um, and I, I outline this, but it's the same. You can use it for any SOP anywhere in your business. And I've used it with so many clients myself. Here's a step-by-step. Step. step one is just to like brain dump on a Google Doc or in a notebook or somewhere. Just get all out of your head every single possible little step you can possibly think of for the system you're about to create. In this case, we're talking about, you know, pod podcasting when you have a podcast. Um, and then once you brain dump all of it, then you go back and you start to refine it. You organize it. Maybe you think about steps that maybe are a duplicate. Um, maybe steps that are missing and you start to make it look a little neater. And then from there, you just kind of keep combing back again and say, okay, how can I make this easier for me? How can I make this easier for the person using it? What can I delegate to a VA if I have one? And then what can I automate and think about, you know, if you have, if, even if you don't have Dubsado, you can get a Zapier account and say, okay, if I have this project management tool and this scheduler and this whatever, um, what, what can talk to each other so that I can automate the steps and just kind of get really curious. This is where the creativity comes into play and curiosity of like, what could I automate? What are the possibilities? Um, you can automate a lot more than most people realize, I think. Yeah. Um, and then from there, you kind of just, then you can put it in your project management tool as a step-by-step, -step, make it a template. In the tasks, you're going to put links to anything you need. Um, you know, for example, if one of the steps in your podcast system uh, SOP is to create the artwork, well, maybe in the task, you have the link to the Canva page and the Google Drive folder where it's stored, like just really setting yourself up for success. And then you're just going to keep refining it as time continues. And that's kind of like all the steps to creating an SOP. And if you have a team, you can involve them, ask them about it. Um, at the least, you can create a Loom video of yourself doing the thing, hand it off to your VA, ask them to make the SOP for you, and then it's documented. Mm -hmm. And then you can go on vacation, or then you can onward someone. Like it just, it just from there, the possibilities just keep coming. <laughs> that is a huge point about creating SOPs. Like once a solo entrepreneur is ready to hire so, or it needs to hire someone, so many say, oh, but I'll be able to just do it myself quicker than train someone else to do it. Well, not if you've already created SOPs. And then like you said, even create a video. And if you don't create the video yet, that's fine. You have your SOPs laid out and then you bring someone on and do a training, record it while you're training them. And 
then you you hand it over. And then when you need to hire someone else, you have the training video right there and everything's set up. It makes Absolutely. it a lot easier, doesn't it? It's so much easier. Um, and even like, you know, there are days where I like maybe I'm a little sick or I'm jet lagged from traveling and I'm trying to readjust and I have 10,000 things going on. But if I have the SOPs already in place, already set up, oh, the information's there. I don't even have to think about what I'm doing. It's just so much easier. Absolutely. So, and you mentioned like creating the artwork for the episode, some other things that are in my SOP, like for a solo episode, we're about to get into um, guest intake. For a solo episode, it's write the outline, record the episode, uh, definitely create the artwork, edit the the audio, um, schedule it, uh, or create the blog post. Edit, uh, schedule it in um, the podcast hosting provider, put the audio player in the podcast blog post, schedule the blog post. If you do video, then get that ed or edit that and schedule that on YouTube and on your blog post. So all of those little things and, you know, see it. So it took me a moment. I'm like, okay, because I'm not looking at my list. I have it out of my head and in my SOP. So I don't have to be able to rattle it off like this anymore because it's already in my system. So do all that. There are a few more steps in there. So <laughs> I love how detailed you are. I, you know, creating SOPs, I think, is a little bit like moving where you think you have an idea of how much you have to do. And then the day of the move, you're like, oh, my gosh, there's actually a million little tiny itty bitty baby tasks. And um, yeah, I appreciate that you have all those little baby tasks accounted for. It really is helpful. Well, there was one time that I scheduled the podcast blog post and I neglected to schedule it in the podcast uh, hosting provider. Oh, no. And that's the key. That's where it goes out to Apple, Spotify and all the rest. So that, yeah, that's why I write them out, each individual one. Yeah. yeah. Not to make it look like more step, you know, not to be overwhelming, but to make sure that I really do every step. Yeah, absolutely. Like our brains are not computers. We can't trust our brains to remember every single little thing, truly. <laughs> yeah. So all of the, for me, all of those steps exist in my guest interviews as well. And the guests don't concern themselves with any of that. I have them there for me. But there are extra ones with a guest, of course. You need to either reach out to them, have them reach out to you, um, pre-vet them, research them, all of that. Now, honestly, I don't have those in my SOP for the guests. My guests, I start with schedule because I've already done the other part. Usually they reach out to me. Some of them I do reach out to, but I just start with schedule. And then I have this other string of things that, that goes with it. So let's talk about setting up a guest intake. Because honestly, at first, I didn't have a system for guests. I mean, sort of, but there was no automation to it at all. I did it all manually. I manually sent them my scheduling link. Then I emailed them and said, would you please send me a bio and photo? and all of that. And it was so time consuming. And, and often I had to prompt them again. And yeah, I had that. A yeah. That sounds like so much work. That's not fair to you. <laughs> no. Well, so there are a few different ways you can create a workflow in Dumsado to take care of the guest intake. And I'm speaking from experience as someone who's been a guest of different things that I've seen um, and how I would personally put them into Dubsado. Um, I'm going to skip ahead. Let's say that you have already spoken to the guest, whether it's over email or you had a chat and y'all agree it's a good fit. So, and again, you can maybe put these steps in different order based on what feels good to you. Um, perhaps the first thing you do is send a contract if you have one. Mm -hmm. um, and then the guest can fill out all of the information in the contract, their name, they sign it, good. Then that will trigger the next email that goes out. Um, there's one of two ways you can do this. So the next email could go out, could say, hi, thank you for signing the contract. Now it's time to actually schedule your call. Here is a link to the scheduler. 
Now, the scheduler, I what I like to do with schedulers is in Dubsado, you can attach a form to the scheduler so that they have to do them at the same time. Mm. So they're getting their, themselves on the books and they're giving you their bio. They're giving you their headshot. They're giving you all their links. It's all in one, all one and done, so you don't have to chase them down. Another way to go about this is to send them just the scheduler. Once they schedule that, then they get the email with a separate form. And one of the cool things like I like about Dubsado is you can set up automated email reminders if a form isn't filled out in a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So I like to send gentle reminders if someone hasn't filled out an important form along the lines of, hi, just checking in, wanted to make sure this hit your inbox safely. Hi, just checking in, do you have any questions? To remind folks like, hey, you have to fill out this form. Maybe they have to fill out the form before they schedule. That way you don't have to worry about um, kind of chasing them down before the scheduled um, uh, the, the interview. Mm -hmm. Depending on, you know, how often you feel like you have to chase down your clients depends on the order of, of pressure you apply, <laughs> basically. Right. Uh, but no matter which way you order these things, these are all triggered. Basically, once this is done, the next email goes out. Once this is done, the next email goes out. That means that you don't have to think about it. Mm. So now at this point, you've gotten all the information you need from them from the form. They've signed the contract. They've scheduled. Now the Dubsado scheduler is automatically going to send out the reminders you set up. The reminders you set up can say, hi, we're about to do X, Y, Z. Um, here is a, um, you know, a reminder of things you need. Get a good you know, microphone, be in a quiet room, all the things that you would normally remind your guest. Even if they've been a guest a million times before, I always appreciate it when people send me those reminders because, you know, there are things, you know, I'm not editing the podcast, so I don't think about all those things. Right. Uh, I appreciate the reminders. Um, if you like to send a specific outline, you can also set up an automated email that requires approval. So basically what will happen, let's say you want the email to go out three days before um, the scheduled podcast interview. So basically Dubsado will send you a little notification saying, hi, we're waiting for your approval on this email. You can go into Dubsado, look at the email, enter in all the customized content, the outline, and then hit approve and then it'll send. So, wow. So even though you had to do that part manually, the reminder was automated. So you don't, again, don't have to think about it. And then, of course, after the interview is done, you have the follow up emails that are automated and maybe even some automated to do's like, hi, now that this is done, send a thank you card, which I've never had a podcast go send me a thank you card. But that's where you can, again, add in a little creativity, like how do I want to engage with my um, my guests? How do I want to stay in touch with them? Maybe the reminder is to re replicate the template in my project management tool, reminding me to do all the follow-up tasks after it's done. And then you can kind of um, take it from there. So that's kind of like the bare bones workflow as I would see them if you were to use Dubsado for a podcast interview. That's awesome. So in my system, I do not, or maybe I can, and I haven't set up a reminder for me to send the outline. I have that in a separate thing, my uh, combined calendar and reminder system where I manually put it in on a certain day, X number of days before the interview, right, uh, right outline, send outline. And, you know, if that works for you, that's it's what not you ideal. Be doing, but it's not it ideal. is nice to have someone else remind you. <laughs> yeah, because then I have to remember to set a reminder. Right. Right. And then you and have to me, go into your calendar. Exactly. It's extra work because I'm going into my calendar every week to look at the week, like, you know, every Monday to look at the week ahead. And really, I need to do it more often. And I do. I do do it more often because I like to send the outlines a week before. And so if I'm looking on Monday, what it, well, I don't have them anymore. I'm now set up for I redid my scheduling. So I do interviews on Thursday. So if I do look on Monday, I have time. That gives me a few days to, you know, write the inter uh, the outline. But before, you know, when I had interviews on Monday, I'm like, oh my God, I have to write that outline today and send it today. <laughs> That's not cool. <laughs> right. And then you hope that the person you're 
interviewing reads their email and like right. digests it before the call. And this is also a beautiful example of like you have a great system in place and you just got an idea for one little way you could tweak it to make it even better, to reclaim even a little bit more time. 